Good morning, children. Let us start with the B part today. Okay, the topic is natural damped and forced vibrations resonance. Okay, natural damped and forced vibrations resonance. The first one is natural vibration. Now, what is the natural vibration? Now, um, suppose imagine I have set a pendulum. Okay, I set a pendulum to vibrate. So, you know, it will undergo a to and fro motion. This is one vibration. Now, free vibration means once I set this pendulum to oscillate, if it is going to keep on oscillating without stopping, that is going to be called natural vibration or free vibration. Okay. I just have to start it and then it kept on oscillating with its own in this kept on oscillating without stopping by itself that is called natural frequency or natural vibration or free vibration now practically this is not possible because of the air friction slowly the pendulum if you just disturb it once and leave it will start vibrating faster then slowly it will slow down and come to rest okay so but that leads to another topic now the first topic natural vibrations means whenever a body vibrate with its original frequency then it is called natural vibration the periodic vibration of a body the word periodic is important of a body in the absence of any external force on it or call in the sense you just started the oscillation and then you left it okay there is no external force constantly to uh, bring it back to the oscillation so in that case that is called natural frequency okay so this is the definition of um, natural vibration and then two things you have to remember the period of vibration depends on shape and size of the pendulum you know this last year also you studied Okay, a shorter pendulum will have a different frequency and a longer pendulum will have different frequency. So, the period of frequency or period of frequency of vibration depends on shape and size of the body. So, this the time period of the body is called natural period and the frequency is called natural frequency. Okay, and the third thing you need to know about natural vibrations are these vibrations actually occur only in vacuum because the presence of medium around the body offers some resistance due to which the amplitude of vibration does not remain constant but it con continuously decreases so the conclusion is natural vibrations are possible only in vacuum okay are possible only in vacuum okay then what happens like natural vibrations uh, if you see the uh, wave Okay, displacement graph for a natural vibration nature of natural vibration if i draw a graph of it it will be it will be like this with constant amplitude and frequency this is called natural vibration its amplitude will remain constant and frequency will also remain constant so Displacement time graph for a natural uh, free vibrations, time in the x-axis, displacement in y-axis and you have a wave. So, draw these dotted lines first so that you make sure your amplitude always remains the same. Okay, you draw a dotted line first and then you draw the wave. That will help you to get a exact diagram time displacement. So this is called natural vibration. So what are the conclusions? Amplitude will remain the same. Frequency will remain the same. Let's see them as properties. Amplitude and frequency remain constant. Once a body starts vibrating, it continues its vibration with the same amplitude and same frequency. In case of natural vibrations, which is possible only in vacuum or in ideal conditions. Okay. Then the vibrations are possible only in vacuum since in practice it is impossible to vacuum it is have vacuum it is very difficult to realize such vibrations in practice in practice surrounding medium offers resistance so the energy of vibrating body continuously decreases due to which it gradually decreases so this can be asked as a reason for damping 
okay now let's go to damped vibration so this is possible only in ideal situations but in practical situation what happens is damped vibration natural vibration is possible only in ideal situations or in vacuum whereas what happens in practical situations is called damped vibrations okay so damped vibrations how will the nature of that be the wave amplitude will keep decreasing and finally comes to rest so same way you draw this dotted line first okay before you draw the wave and then now you draw the wave these vibrations are called damped vibrations why its amplitude keeps on decreasing till it becomes zero okay so this is the graph of a uh, damped vibration sorry displacement okay so definition graph and then some points uh, re related to it okay definition periodic vibration so this is also a periodic vibration of a body of decreasing amplitude in forced vibration you have you had same amplitude or fixed amplitude here it is decreasing amplitude in the presence of or due to some resistive force is called damped vibrations okay definition and then come straight to um, so the reason for damping you have studied here reason for damping means reason why this amplitude is decreasing so the surrounding medium offers resistance to the motion so the energy continuously decreases due to which the amplitude of the motion gradually decreases okay so energy of the vibrating body continuously dissipates in doing work against force of friction so amplitude gradually decreases after some time when it lost all energy it will stop vibrating okay now examples now examples of free vibrations would be uh, any vibration but in vacuum simply you can say see the examples of free vibrations if the bob of a pendulum is displaced slightly from its mean position it starts vibrating with its natural frequency which is determined by the length and all that it is given by frequency this so um so the um the point that is understood here is a vibrating pendulum which is vibrating in vacuum will be having natural vibrations so in example so you can write if a bob of pendulum is displaced slight from its mean position the second example so there are so many examples given load suspended from a spring when stretched and released starts vibrating with natural frequency so you can just write till this this one when a tuning fork is struck so what is a tuning fork okay uh, if you would have seen the previous video um, so a tuning fork is a metal thing um, its shape is like this okay it will have like two arms and it's metal and if i hit it with a rubber hammer if i hit it with a rubber hammer it will start vibrating with a particular frequency on this it would be written like 256 hertz or something means the frequency of vibration of this is 256 hertz okay maybe when you come to school i can show we have it in the lab now so when a tuning fork is struck against a hard rubber it vibrates with a natural frequency when an air column in flute is made to vibrate it vibrates with natural frequency when a string in the instrument like guitar a sitar guitar violin are plucked the vibrations are natural vibrations okay so when we strike the keys of a piano strings are set into vibration again that with a natural frequency okay a string of a given length between it and so like this there are so many examples so you can just go through them but remember all these will happen only in vacuum condition so so all these examples basically you should write 
a load suspended when string and then relay starts vibrating with natural frequency in vacuum okay with its natural it, with, it vibrates with its natural frequency in vacuum now examples of damped vibration you can have the same examples but in air see a tuning fork when stroked on a rubber pad executes damped vibrations in air in vacuum it executes natural vibration in air it executes damped vibration a simple pendulum oscillating in air executes damped vibrations I hope you've understood. So you can have the same definite, same example, but in vacuum or in ideal condition, it will exhibit natural frequency, and in um, actual condition, that is in air, it will exhibit damped vibration. <laughs>
Here the frequency of the external periodic force need not be equal to the natural frequency of the vibrating body. Then you have difference between um, free vibration, natural vibration and damped vibration. You just can read through it. Now, now, so the vibration is coming to zero. Some way, if I have to maintain a constant vibration, for example, in a clock, you know, the pendulum vibrates. So you start the clock and after some time, if it stops, the purpose is not solved. You want the clock to continuously vibrate so that it can measure the time. Okay, so like that, in many cases, you want continuous vibrations. You want natural vibrations to happen, but practically only damped vibrations happen. So in that case, okay, so to make that possible, you have to use some external force. Now, external force means maybe you keep some um, uh, hammer or something here and every time it comes you just it just pushes it back so it will keep continuing that vibrating okay so you need the help of an external force to keep this body vibrate with its natural frequency without that it will have damped vibrations means it will come to rest to keep it vibrating constantly or continuously I need an external force now that comes under the topic called forced vibration forced vibration okay in this the nature will be like this but the thing is you will have two bodies involved one is called the natural uh, body and the other one is called the external periodic force now usually this external force also they will use a vibrating body they will use a vibrating body and so that it can keep vibrating so definition of forced vibration goes like this the vibration of a body which takes place under the influence of an external periodic force acting on it are called forced vibrations okay take place under the influence of an external periodic force acting on it is called forced vibration so few points you have to remember is when the external periodic force is applied the body no longer vibrates with its natural frequency but it gradually acquires the frequency of the applied periodic force the ex external applied force is called driving force now a simple example suppose um, you take um, a metal table is there and you vibrate something okay you 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 have you take a vibrating scale or something and you keep it on the metal um, metal table you will hear a loud sound you will hear a loud sound why this um, this vibrating scale or tuning fork has forced the table molecules to vibrate and so this table molecules have under undergone a forced vibrations and so that is called the external force and the driving force is that scale or the tuning fork that makes it vibrating or the simple example the other example could be a guitar so you all have seen a guitar and the structure of a guitar is like this so you know there are six strings in this okay now uh, the main part of this is the strings the strings when they vibrate they produce sounds of different frequency okay now why do you have this big box like thing the purpose is there will be a hole here so the vibrations that is produced on the string it is transferred or it is yeah, transferred to the air inside and you know that that is a hollow box that will be a hollow wooden box so this string will force those air molecules to vibrate and they will vibrate because the surface area is more or more molecules are said to vibrate you will hear a louder sound now you can use a guitar can be like this just you take a wooden board and have six strings attached to it without this sound box this is called sound box without this also you can have a guitar but the problem is in this case 
you will you will not be able to produce a loud sound why only directly the vibration of this uh, wire you are able to hear the string you are able to hear okay which is of less amplitude but in this case the string will force the molecules inside the sound box to vibrate and because the sound box is hollow and has large number of molecules so each molecule will be set to vibrate and as a whole if you see the sound that you hear will be of larger amplitude and a significant sound you can hear so this is one best example of forced exam forced vibration the string is forcing the molecules inside the uh, sound box to vibrate okay so this external force is called this external force can be called driving force okay so amplitude of forced vibration depends on the frequency of external force amplitude of vibrations of this original force depends on the frequency of external force same way in this case amplitude of vibrations of these air molecules inside depends on the frequency of vibration of these string okay then uh, if the frequency is different from natural frequency amplitude of okay this i'll cover it in resonance now come straight to examples examples of forced vibrations when the stem of a vibrating tuning fork is pressed against a table top the tuning fork produces the forced vibrations in the table top the table top has a much larger area than the tuning fork so forced vibrations produces a louder sound second example could be in a guitar when an artist plays on its string by his fingers the vibrations in them caused the forced vibrations in the air enclosed in the hollow box okay so these are examples of forced vibrations okay this comes as a reasoning question stringed instruments stringed instruments means guitar sitar violin and all are called stringed instruments in the stringed instruments provided with a hollow sound box in all these instruments you will be seeing this sound box will be there what is the reason so give reason why the stringed instruments are provided with a hollow sound box answer will be first point strings are made to vibrate by plucking which produces forced vibration in air of the sound box the surface area of air in the sound box is large so the forced vibrations send forth a greater energy and cause a loud sound okay then you have difference between natural frequency and natural vibration and forced vibration you can just go through it okay hope you have understood the concept so ideally vibration should be like this of same amplitude and same frequency but it is possible only in vacuum practically damped vibrations happen what is that the amplitude keeps decreasing and comes to rest in order to obtain this kind of a vibration i need to use an external force and that comes under a type called forced vibrations so by using an external force i can force a body to vibrate uh, vibrate uh, for a continuously and produce louder sound so these are the three types so in everything definition examples are all very important now forced vibrations in forced vibrations there will be two types in forced vibrations there are two possibilities so in forced vibrations you have one external force or external body and then the natural body or this is called driving force okay this is called driving force and this is the natural body now two bodies are there okay now if frequency of external body um let me take it as f e and this as f n so if frequency of external body is not equal to the frequency of natural body then amplitude of vibration the forced vibrations that are produced the amplitude will be less in case the frequency of this external force and the frequency of the natural force if they are not equal there are two different values then the forced vibrations amplitude will be less amplitude of vibration will be less the other possibility is if frequency of vibration of the external force becomes equal to frequency of vibrations of the 
natural body then the amplitude of vibration will be very large or we can say the body starts vibrating with a larger amplitude with a larger amplitude now these two cases only they have given here if the frequency of external force is different from the natural frequency that's the first case difference of frequency of external force is different from natural frequency amplitude of oscillations is very small amplitude of vibration will be very small but in the, if the frequency of external force is equal to exactly equal to the natural frequency amplitude of oscillations will be very large now this leads to another case called resonance okay so this i'll be doing in the next class the topic of resonance and it has lots of applications and other things i hope you understood this so the video that i added in between is um is a just an additional information because it had uh, and it had the figures and it was showing everything uh, everything in um, a video form so i i think it would have helped you to understand better thank you children